Good morning. Today is Friday, February 12th. It is day two in the schedule. We begin our day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment, and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears, and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear, and the mute speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The beautiful sounds of daily life around us, O God, are often muted by the noise of clamor and din. Indeed, it is frequently difficult to discern the wisdom of your Son Jesus amidst such distractions. Admitting our own hardness of heart and hearing, we long to hear the sounds of mercy and forgiveness that surround us each day. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. St. John Bosco, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please face the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We begin first, first of all, in the beginning of the gospel, we get a bit of a geography lesson telling where Jesus is. He's going from place to place, the region of Tyre and to the, to, uh, the region of uh, the Decapolis. That's important because it's telling us he's in Gentile territory now. He's, he's not just where in his comfort zone with the Jewish people, which he was sent to first talk to or spread the good news among. Now he's into the Gentile territory, very symbolic of his good news, his message being for the whole world, not just for a specific people. And in that, he encounters this man who is, who is deaf, and he's got a speech impediment, and they ask him to heal the man. This man can be symbolic of all of us when we're, we're deaf to the word of God. We, we don't hear it completely or don't understand it. And we're an impediment. We don't know how to spread that good news. But it's with this encounter with Jesus that we see, uh, we see the man being healed by Jesus' willing it. It also goes forward to show us the importance of the sacraments. You know, Jesus could just make everything happen by his own will alone. He didn't have to come, and we hear it kind of sounds kind of gross. He spits, he spits to uh, make in the man's tongue to make him speak. He puts his finger in his ear. It's almost like he's inserting like a, an electrical outlet, the Holy Spirit within the man. But Jesus uses these uses touch, uses his words, because when Jesus speaks, something happens. When he speaks and says, Ephatha, they use that word, which means be open, the man is healed. Jesus' words are efficacious. And it goes forward, this is a beautiful passage to remind us of the importance of the sacraments. Again, Jesus could just affect his grace upon us, his very life, put his life, very life within us, just by saying it. But he knows in our humanity, we need, we need the use of our senses. We hear the words. He works through the priests. When you hear the priests in consecration saying, this is my body, this is my blood, those are the words of Jesus speaking, affecting what's happening. In confession, you'll hear the priest say, I absolve you of your sins. It's Jesus, Jesus' words taking effect. When he, when he says, I, when the priest says, I absolve you of your sins, that's Jesus reaching out. Sins are forgiven because he said so. We baptize. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The effect of baptism comes through, and the use of the, the material things. In the Eucharist, of course, we have wine and bread that we use that become the body and blood of Christ for his real presence. In baptism, we pour water. In confirmation, in the anointing of the sick, we trace, uh, use oil, trace the oil on, 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 on the um, forehead, on your hands, whatever the case is for the sacrament, to affect those sacraments. He uses the sense of touch, the sense of, of hearing to affect his graces among us because we need that. We need to experience Jesus. That's the beauty of our sacraments. Again, he couldn't just say all these things um, and they would be so. 
but he knows in our human experience we need to experience him in these forms. And as he touches this man to receive his word and to, by, by curing his hearing and by releasing him of his speech impediment to be able to proclaim his gospel to the world, so he does to us as well. We allow him to. We experience our Lord through the sacraments. And God willing, we'll be able to open again soon here as a parish to be able to experience those sacraments again. And I think the absence of them as we're at home now during this time of lockdown realizes how much we yearn for those things. The Eucharist, the sacrament of reconciliation, all these sacraments that we have are such a beautiful thing to be able to encounter our Lord in a real way. We can never take them for granted. And perhaps if there's going to be a silver lining to the lockdown is that we realize how much we need these sacraments in our life to fully encounter our Lord, to experience his loving grace for us. Have a good day, everybody. My check, my check, one, two, two. Good morning, I'm Armando. Please pay attention to the following announcements. The CIA Salesians Improv Troupe will meet in person and remote today from 3 to 4.30. If you're interested in joining, please email Mr. Dwyer at kdwyer.salesianhigh.org. All are welcome to participate or watch. Well, well, well. Winter break is just around the corner. What are you going to do? Rest? Play football in the snow? Contemplate your recent life choices? Well, how about you join Mr. Seifring and Mr. Dwyer on Friday, February 19th, for a special gaming tournament. We'll be hosting Super Smash Bros., Warzone, and Rocket League tournaments starting at 2 p.m. If you're interested in participating, email Mr. Dwyer or Mr. Seifring to be admitted into the special video game tournament Google Classroom utilized during Spirit Week. For Warzone and Rocket League, set up your teams beforehand and notify us no later than Wednesday, February 16th so we can organize the brackets. Details and info will be sent out through Instagram and the Google Classroom. So again, email Mr. Seifring or Mr. Dwyer if you're interested in participating. It's free, it's easy, and it should be a lot of fun. We hope to hear from you soon. Thank you, have a wonderful day, and it's a great day to be an eagle.